Currently, patients who've suffered a cardiac arrest where the heart stops from major trauma rarely survive. Less than one out of 10 of these patients leave the hospital alive. EPR, or emergency preservation and resuscitation, is a novel way that we're hoping to try to resuscitate trauma patients who suffered a cardiac arrest. What do we have here? We have a 22-year-old gunshot wound to the chest. He has agonal. EPR buys time because the body can't tolerate not having blood flow for more, even more than just a few minutes. By cooling them, we can buy time by slowing down the processes that occur when there's no blood flow to the vital organs like the heart and brain. This will allow the surgeons to repair injuries and save the patients. Blood pressure on them. A patient might come into the emergency department having suffered a gunshot wound or stab wound, and then we find that the patient doesn't have a pulse. Chest tube's going in. I don't have a pulse anymore, you guys. Less somebody needs to start CPR. We don't have any pulse. Routine care for somebody like this would include putting in a breathing tube to help them breathe, putting in large intravenous catheters so we give them lots of fluids and blood, but all these endeavors don't often work. What do you think, Dennis? How for EPR? What we then do is sometimes open the chest to help do what's called open chest CPR, but this still doesn't work in many circumstances. With EPR, what we would then do is put in a large tube to be able to administer a large amount of ice cold fluid to the patient in order to cool them down to 50 degrees. Once they're cooled, now we have some time to get the patient to the operating room for the surgeons to control the bleeding and then we can resuscitate them in a delayed fashion. The interest in using hypothermia therapeutically after various types of problems such as cardiac arrest or trauma came about from noticing that there are patients who drown in cold water and survive incredibly long times underneath the water. So it appears that hypothermia could have a great preserving effect if you have a cardiac arrest. And then both clamps. Yeah. Therapeutic hypothermia after cardiac arrest involves just cooling patients by about six or seven degrees below normal. For EPR, we're talking about cooling them by almost 50 degrees below the normal temperatures. This type of cooling has never been tried before in trauma patients. Before conducting any kind of research like this in patients, we do have to have a significant amount of preclinical work to show that this will, may work in the situation. Our studies suggest that EPR can save lives. Obviously, a patient who has a cardiac arrest is not in a position to be able to give us consent like we would for a routine type of research study. So in this type of trial, we need to do a community consultation where we tell the community about this project that we're trying to do and get their feedback. And we also disclose this to the public so people know that we are doing this trial in this area. This type of study does have to be reviewed by federal agencies as well as local ethics boards that way that we can maintain this, the appropriate safety for the public as we conduct this trial. Because this is a new technique and very few people will know how to do this, we won't be able to apply this in every patient who would fit the appropriate criteria. So there will be patients who will come through who might be candidates for EPR that for the moment we would not enroll and we would continue our standard care. Patients who have suffered blunt trauma, which is usually from car accidents or falls, will not be included in this study. We will also not be including children, pregnant women, or people over the age of 65. If you have any questions or concerns about this study, or you do not wish to participate, you can contact us. We think it will take around 15 to 20 minutes to get the cooling accomplished, Hopefully within 45 minutes to an hour, the surgeons can control the bleeding. At that point, we would have to use a heart-lung machine to start the circulation again and start the rewarming process that might take another hour to two hours. We plan to start this study with approximately 10 patients. We'll see how the results are going at that point, and then we may continue to enroll additional patients as needed. We think this will happen over the next year or two years. Our goal would be to first resuscitate the patient so that the heartbeat starts again. And then we would want to watch them closely to make sure they wake up, they don't develop organ system failure, and they're able to leave the hospital and go back to having normal lives.